this is Dead Horse. Two hundred and fifty miles north of the Arctic Circle, and one of the coldest, remotest settlements on Earth. Dead Horse only exists because there are huge reserves of oil to be extracted from below the ice. It's not the most welcoming place for a tiny Arctic fox. First, he has to get past the local heavies. Red foxes followed the oil workers here, and they've made themselves at home. Twice the size of the Arctic fox, he's quite capable of killing any trespassers on his patch. But the little fox is hungry enough to take the risk. Everyone knows you shouldn't put bare flesh on freezing metal. But the fox has to use his tongue to thaw out the frozen scrap. It's the kind of place where you have to hold your nerve. Freezing temperatures don't stop the oil workers going about their business. Winter is a good time to get those awkward little jobs out of the way. Like moving a 2,000 ton drilling rig to a new field. Probably best not to try and push your luck too far. Even trees struggle to take root in the icy soil. But life is possible even here. An arctic ground squirrel. He spends his entire winter asleep, out like a light for eight months straight. The longest, deepest hibernation of any animal on Earth. This extreme lifestyle can only be seen using a special filming burrow. He's pretty much stopped breathing. His heart is barely beating. The sun is getting higher every day. In the darkness of his burrow, the squirrel's body clock drags him out of bed. There's no time to waste. Last time he saw it, back in the autumn, this was his territory. Now he's got to fight for it all over again. For the next two weeks, he'll barely have time even to eat. It's a constant battle to keep rival males off his turf.
there's a sense of anticipation in the air. Females emerge a few days later. He won't want to miss his first date. And there she is. But what's he doing? She'll only be fertile for 12 hours in the entire year. There's no time for hesitation. He cautiously makes his move. She might be in a hurry, but she can still be choosy. that while there are other males around, she could easily go off with someone else. So he won't leave her side for 24 hours. An Alaskan spring moves fast, and if you don't seize the moment, it will pass you by. A Sami family has agreed to teach me everything they know about the Northern Lights reindeer and surviving in the Arctic wilderness. Hello, hello. Oh, hello. hello. You're the man I've come this far north to meet. Hello, <laughs> welcome. I'm Gordon. My Lovely to meet Petri. you. Nice to meet you, Petri. So I read it's very, it's rude to ask someone how many reindeer they have, is that correct? Yeah, because I don't ask you how much money in the bank you have. I have no money in the bank <laughs> at the moment. <laughs> I can see the sort of 40 at least here. So these are... Yeah, I have a I don't want to know. I don't want... If it's rude, I don't want to know. I, I, can, <laughs> I can count them. Petri Matis started looking after reindeer when he was just two years old. He comes from a long line of Sami reindeer herders and still follows the traditional ways. So your shoes, are they, is that reindeer fur? Yes. Yeah. Much, much better what you have now. Really? And it's really best one when there's minus 30, minus 40. Goodness. And uh, cold as with this it's been, it's uh, 1999 January. There's one week and there's minus 50, right? Whoa, really? So when it's down as low as minus 50, you don't see reindeer shaking and shivering? No, if they get enough wood in the forest, no problem with that cold weather. Reindeer evolved during the Ice Age. There are reports of them living in temperatures as low as minus 70. Petri leaves me in charge of feeding time, so I can take a closer look at these incredible animals. Hey, you. Over here. There we go. It is amazing to be eyeball to eyeball, nose to nose with a reindeer. The first thing I'm struck by is their winter coat, which is up to seven centimetres thick. Fur covers almost every part of their body. It's almost impossible to sink my hand into this dense fur. It is unbelievably thick. You can't part the hairs and see the skin beneath. Not only is the hair super thick, but each one of these hair fibres is, is hollow. So the animal is insulated and in each individual hair is insulated with that air void in the middle. Everything about them from their feet to the tops of their antlers from the tip of their nose to the end of their tail, they adapted to survive in one of the harshest environments on Earth. This is the great Ubari Sand Sea in the heart of the Sahara. These swallows have traveled one and a half thousand miles since they left Nigeria. 
Their superb powers of navigation will eventually guide them to Europe, but now they and other thirsty migrants need to find a speck of blue amidst this ocean of sand. And here it is, Umm al -Mah. Here too, ancient groundwater wells up to the surface. But the birds need to be careful, for the sun has played a terrible trick. This oasis is poisonous. Intense evaporation over thousands of years has left the water saltier than the sea. As if to underline the horror, the place is infested by vast swarms of flies. But this plague is a bird's salvation. The flies are filled with fresh water, filtered from the brine. So like a desert wanderer squeezing a drink from a cactus, the birds get all the water they need from the flies' bodies. More and more migrants join in. Wagtails. This is the bird's only stopover. It gives them enough fuel to escape from the Sahara and Africa. To help her in her quest, she's equipped with three superpowers. First, an amazing approach to getting about. Portia is a jumping spider. able to leap up to 50 times her own body length. Nowhere seems beyond her reach. Next, her second superpower, superb eyesight. Essential, if she's to distinguish her prey in all this clutter. Because her prey doesn't stray. Portia is a spider-eating spider. This raises a few problems. Her lunch is three times her size. Packed with venom and surrounded by a sticky trap. Mission impossible? Not at all, because of her third superpower. Portia is a genius. She can map her world in three dimensions and formulate a plan of attack. She can have an idea The web builder is blind. It won't have a clue that she's coming.
right on target and safely behind those fangs. But a mind as active as Porsche's can always do with more brain food. Here, there's no anchor point for the abseil. But Porsche has another idea. Instead of going to the spider, she will bring the spider to her. She plucks the strands to imitate struggling prey. Drawing the spider in to its death. <laughs> <laughs> 